again, select that rewind. <laughs> it, is re it is now recording. Oh, gosh. Oh, thank you so much. All right. That, that's, that's the little exclusive piece. If you weren't here on time, you missed that. Yeah. Okay, but let me, let me say this. Kind of why it's important that you've done this is it sets you apart from 90, in your space, probably 98% of your peers, they're not doing anything like this. You hear that, ladies and gentlemen? 98%, that, that is a huge margin of notaries and agencies that are not executing sales copy. Pay attention to that because this is what's gonna set you apart from all of these other notaries that are out there. I, I said, I, I, real quick, Donnie, I just wanted to tell everybody, I said, you do not want to miss this episode right here. This is going to take your business to a whole nother level. Yeah. A whole nother level. But yeah, and, and the great part is, even if you're just doing the basics, you're already a league ahead of, a league ahead of most of your peers. And then if you're like anything like Tiger, you know, once you get a taste of it, it's blood in the water. <laughs> it's like, I'm coming. I, I need to know more. I need to go deeper. I need to test more, more ideas. And, and then you'll be executing at a more advanced level that sets you way up in the upper echelons in terms of your ability to differentiate yourself and to make people want to work with you instead of Joe Schmo in the Smedium. <laughs> yes. No, hey, Smedium is cool. I got no hate, <laughs> no hate in my heart for the dudes in the Smedium. But Tiger, you're a tall guy. I'm a pretty tall guy. So, you know, shout out to the extra watch. But yeah, okay, so uh, the... So, I mean, here's one of the things that I think is absolutely critical okay. in 2021 is nobody wants to read. Nobody wants, to, they're not going to be bored. People refuse to be bored. And, you know, Bridgerton's on. Let me turn that off. They're not going to sit and read boring copy, boring content. They're not going to watch boring videos. And if you talk about your notary business, just, you know, the, the basics or the, the fundamentals, the, the technical aspects of what a notary does, or what a notary is, they're gonna they're gonna be bored out of their mind. Truth mm -hmm. is, you know, you, you probably bored <laughs> bored by it too. Like you're excited about the the opportunity that it creates for you to build a business, to make some money, have some control. I mean, make a lot of money, have control over your time, control over your life, control over who you work with. None of those things have anything to do do with the technical aspects of the business and so the, my main point is the, the biggest mistake everyone makes i think uh, well i shouldn't say everybody but the biggest mistake that i see is uh not realizing that you have to be interesting i say entertaining because that's like a little bit higher level mm -hmm. but not entertaining doesn't necessarily mean funny but it means it has to be something i'd be willing to spend a little bit of time reading watching or listening and if you if you the only way to do that is to talk about something that people are already interested in, um, which is, you know, the, the things that they're, I, I categorize it like uh, their, their dreams and desires. So what are, what are they dreaming about? What are they desiring to do? If you talk about those things, you're automatically going to be interested, right? You talk about their fears and frustrations. They're going to automatically be interested in that because if I'm scared of something, you can help me get, handle that. I'm in a good... I'm going to want to read that. If I'm frustrated with something, you can help me get through it. I'm happy about that. And there are pains and problems. Same thing. So if you got, man, I can't get leads for my notary business. If we're talking about that. Boom. I want to be in that session so I can hear how I can solve that problem. It's causing me pain because I can't, I can't reach the level of income that I want until I fix that. You're interested. And you, and you haven't even done anything else except decided I'm going to talk about what my reader is interested in. Mm -hmm. And as you notice, like I said, it's, a, it's really about the, the, the things going on with your reader or your, like I said, the viewer, if you're doing video or the listener, if you're doing audio podcast or, or whatever, the things that they're interested in, not the technical aspects of your business. So don't be boring. That's number one. And really number two is wrapped up in that. Uh, you have to talk about the person who you want to reach rather than talking about yourself. And this is the this is probably the most common thing, even more than being boring. Uh, I don't know if it's if it's worse or not, but everyone believes they need to talk about themselves. 
you know. And the truth is, people don't care about you. Not facts. Not really. They they only care about. I mean, if your family, they care. Maybe. <laughs> yeah, depending on your family members. Depending on who. It depending on how much they need what you got in your pocket. But people are interested in their own stuff, their own problems and their own goals, their own stack of to do's. And so if you want to if you want to write copy that people will read that will get them to do what you want them to do, you got to talk about them, which goes back to the pains, problems, fears, frustrations and dreams and desires that they have. How can I help them? How can I help them get what they want or get away from what they don't want and do it in a way that's unique and easy? Uh, then that's that's what you got to do. So let me ask you this: So, yeah. like sales copy for people that have not been exposed to sales copy and copywriting, where would they have seen sales copy, like commercials, yeah, uh, ads? Like where what where are some of the common places that people are being exposed to sales copy every single day, but don't? realize that they're being exposed to it yeah the emails you get in your email in your inbox that's copy and now whether it's done well or not as a different two different conversations but that's mm -hmm. sales copy uh definitely commercials that you see uh uh infomercials obviously the ads that pop up online if they're mm -hmm. space ads or if they're uh, little commercials on youtube in between or what that gets our heads, but little inserts between or in the middle of videos, it's copy. Hmm. Websites, obviously the websites you go to, it may be bad, but it's copy, it's just bad copy. <laughs> it may be good. Uh, but also phone scripts are copy. Um, what else? Billboards, movie trailers, <laughs> uh, right. Book covers on the backs of, of books and backs of movies that's all copy so i mean any, any written material or pre-planned material like like i said if, if it's in video form it can, it can be the video um that is copy and if they i mean whether they know it or not it's copy and it's, it should be uh, approached you know for what it what it's intended to do you don't make a movie trailer to tell them what you want them to know about the movie. You, you tell them, you make a movie trailer to make them say, I got to see that movie. Right. So we recorded it on uh, 18 millimeter. Nah, <laughs> Nobody, I'm already bored. And I didn't even, I'm the one talking. <laughs> I don't right. want to hear that. I don't want to hear uh, Vin Diesel is going to take a shirt off. <laughs> Denzel's going to you know, break their neck. Yeah. Jared Leto is going to be crazy. He's going to do whatever crazy thing he's going to do. That's what they want to see. They want to see Will Smith running with his shirt undone too. That, you know, and they, so even though that's like video, it's images, <clears throat> but people are, are intentionally putting together clips, and you do it all the time, that tell a story and make people want to take an action. In, in the case of a movie uh, trailer, mm -hmm. the action is, let me buy a ticket for that show. Or let me wait for, for that to hit theaters. And let me go to the theater to go see that show. Let me bring my friends so they can make a billion dollars from that. Right. And then, you know, there was a, um, I, speaking of trailers, I, as you see, like I go nuts with trailers now. Like I go crazy with trailers because of the things that you've been talking about. And by the way, ladies and gentlemen, this is like my business coach. This is my mentor friend. He, he shows me this stuff. So, what I'm doing with this notary war room, I want to show you guys, I'm laying out the blueprint of what I've done to be successful as a, a notary and building a nationwide notary agency in a very, very short period of time. And a lot of it has to do with Donnie Bryant teaching me about sales copy. So there was something that you taught me. Um, it was enter the conversation that the person is having in their mind. I believe that's what it was like yeah, right. that they're already having, right? Yeah. Now, right. Can you can you uh, unpack that a little bit? <laughs> yeah, I mean, that's actually if you go way, way old school, you know, that's that's a, a quote from a book. Uh, I don't remember which book it is now, but anyway, it, the whole idea is for, in order because everybody's having a conversation in their own mind. We're doing it right now. Donnie's mm -hmm. got you know, boogers in his nose or whatever, whatever it is. 
we're all thinking about our own thing. And if you want to get someone's attention, the easiest way to get their attention and then get that attention in that where you can direct it into action is for you to get in on uh, the conversation they're already having. Now I put it in Lauren Hill slash Roberta Flack terms. And, <laughs> and I say, we're killing them softly with their own song because we, we got to know what they, what's important to them. We got to know what they're thinking about. We got to know what, they, what they're trying to accomplish as it relates to your business. We don't necessarily have to know, you know about something that we're not going to help them with. You're right. But as a notary, what are they thinking about when they're, you know, the, within, within the way that you can help them, how do you get in on the conversation they're already having? And it depends on your niche, depends on, on your, the particular service that you're going to do. <clears throat> but what are they already thinking about? What are the pains and frustrations that they're, that they're going through? And then you just talk to them about the thing they're already thinking about. The thing, the feeling that they're already feeling, you know, you just hijack the train that's already in motion. Instead of saying, hey, stop, let's talk about notary. Let's talk about... <laughs> yes, yes. So, so I'll give an example of what that looks like in the notary uh, business from what you've taught me, right? So a lot of you guys know that I specialize in power of attorneys, right? So what I would do to enter in the customer's mind, the conversation that they're having, right? I'll write something. And again, like with technology, the way it is, you can get a, a, a real cheap microphone like this and you can voice type whatever you're saying and yeah. do it instantly, right? So I would type up something like, is your mom, is your mom, um, did your mom just come out of the hospital? Mm. Um, and she has been diagnosed and is bedridden now. Is it hard for her to get around, right? Um, to take care of her daily routines and chores and visit the bank and stuff? Well, you may need a power of attorney. Why don't you give us a call? Maybe we can help out. You see how that's different than uh, click here? <laughs> Hey, I'll be your notary. Like, <laughs> come, give me all your documents. I'll print them out yourself. Myself. It's <laughs> it's a completely different beast, ladies and gentlemen. This is something that allows you to reach people on a massive level, which is convincing them to want to trust you. Right? You're building okay. trust because you understand their situation, what they're going through. You can kind of relate to what they're, and you're offering them a solution. Is that my video? Yeah, man, I mean, I think that's a great uh, analogy, great illustration, because if you, if there, if someone's in that position, and a lot of people are, yes, you know, you, you tell a story about, you could be, you could ask the question, but you could also say, hey, Thomas's mother just came out of the hospital, and you, you got a nice picture of, of the situation, and the story's like, ooh, what's going on with that? Because I'm going through the same thing right now. And they're in the story, just like a movie trailer. Like, they're reading it and seeing themselves in it. And th so there's no sales resistance. How could there be? You're not selling anything. You're just telling a story. And it's the story that they're living. Yeah. You're reading their diary to them and saying, this is what's going on here. And then Thomas figured it out, though, how to help his mother out. So she See, I'm not on that level yet. <laughs> <laughs> You're a, you're a bad man, no question about I, it. I, I'm working on it, but that that Thomas story, you just had me like, I was like, oh shit, what's going on with Thomas? And you just made it up. That's so, that's how fucked up it is, man. Like, damn. But yeah, it, I, okay, okay. So for a person that never, never been exposed to copywriting, like what are some three fundamentals that can just get their mind moving in the right direction? like? What could they start doing? Yeah, one of the things that you should start doing is looking closely at what Tiger Tolis was doing. <laughs> <laughs> this is real, but seriously, the way that all, any of us learn best, I mean, is, is by looking at what's working in the real world. You can read books, and that's cool. Nothing wrong with that. I read a lot of books, um, but books are just books. I want to see what's, what's making money right now what's moving the masses right now. And so, you, but also, you know, following Tiger, I mean, obviously you follow him, but paying attention and not just reading to get the information, 
but dissect what he's doing and say, why did Tiger say this? Why did Tiger put that there? Why did Tiger do that? Because Tiger has a strategy for what he's doing. Even if he tells you he doesn't. <laughs> a lot of times he's, he's, I mean, it's very strategic with the way he places what he, where it seems where he puts them. And so you, just the act of thinking about why did he do that and how did it impact you when you read it or saw it or heard it, you just check your own emotions. Oh, he made me, I lost track of time reading the story. Or, ooh, I got a little bit upset and I wanted to fight somebody. <laughs> mm. Or, ooh, you know, I'm, I'm really excited. I want to go, you know, do that, whatever he was, he was talking about. Because the emotion that you feel is the emotion that people who are like you, a lot of people like you are feeling. And so <clears throat> you can you just observe, check your own emotional responses <clears throat> and, 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 and you figure out, okay, this is how he pushed my buttons. And then you go try and do the same thing with your own. You can do it in conversation. You can do it on your regular social media posts just to play around and see what happens mm -hmm. uh, before you start spend, spending money on it. Um, but just see, does, do people get angry when I do this? Sometimes you want to make people angry. At least I do. <laughs> and, and that's one of the core emotions too, right? It's like um, the pleasure versus pain, right? Yeah. And so... so in your opinion, what is the strongest emotion, pleasure or pain? Well, pain is clinically proven to be a stronger emotion you know, by a factor of two. Apparently, I don't know how you determine it's twice as much, but clinical studies have shown people go through twice as much trouble, they'll put in twice as much effort, mm -hmm. or they'll spend twice as much money to get rid of a pain than they will to get pleasure. Even if if you think about it, we talk about drug, the drug thing more than we probably should. But I mean, people are, are chasing the dragon, but also, I mean, when they start getting crazy because the withdrawal starts hitting them, like, ooh, shoot, like now it's pain. So you got, you're gonna try to replace the pain, pain I'm sorry, <laughs> replace the pain with pleasure, but you're driven more by the pain than by the pleasure. And the same thing is true about money. The same thing is true about your health. Like we're not going and getting some people are getting vaccines, <laughs> but you know, what we really want to do is play around until we get sick and then try and go have the doctor fix us. And that's, I mean, so with COVID maybe it's a little different because we're all in the pain of having been locked down all this time, but yeah. people buy aspirin. They don't buy preventive. Like I'm going to take this drug so I don't get a headache. They wait till they got a headache they, and they buy Tylenol, they buy Excedrin or whatever. And the same is true across the board. So anyway, pain is more powerful than pleasure. You got to be careful though. Mm. Uh, and, and you got to test it out because if you leave people, if your copy stays in pain for too long, okay. people get, can get paralyzed or they get depressed and feel like, you know, they may be paralyzed by saying, oh, this is such a bad situation. Or why am I even bothering thinking about it or trying? And especially mm. right now, we, we were doing um, some studies it was about a year ago now, right when COVID started getting pretty bad. Um, the negative, uh, people just wanted, they didn't want to hear it. Like, I don't even, I'm tuning out instantly. So it kind of blew my mind because I'm used to writing from a negative perspective a lot. Because uh, it gets attention like, like police lights when they turn the lights on. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> There's nothing else in the world. You, you see the light, you look at your uh, speedometer, <laughs> check to make sure your belt's on, check to make sure the heat's into the... <laughs> Yeah, yeah. It, it, especially if you're a black man in America. I'm telling you, it's instant. We don't, the pleasure, it doesn't exist. I'm just trying not to get ended today. So it, that's that's where it's at. So but if you stay with the negative, it, it, uh, it can paralyze people and make them not want to continue on. But we were, we were going with hope messages last year, and it's probably still working now. I, I guess we kind of backed away from testing it. Uh, but either way, even if you start with the negativity, if you start with the pain, you start with the frustration. You start with uh, problems. You had to move into a, into positivity quickly. You just use the negative emotion to grab them because it does grab them just like the police life. Mm -hmm. uh, you you want to grab them and put them in a place where they recognize, I need to do something about this. Mm. And then you present them with the, with the positive, which is you, you can do something about this. And here's what it is. And here's why it's safe. And here's why it's easy. And here's why it's cheaper than any other option that you got so so, so is it like is it like that that like if you use the pain thing are you saying like you 
put that light at the end of the tunnel kind of thing is that, yeah it's just like the story with your be mother. a happy ending ending story it needs, it needs to be a happy ending so that they they have it's kind of that's what launches them into taking action like the story with, with your mother she just came out of the hospital that that's it's emotional it's sad you know you're worried about the future you don't really know how how things are going to be so you, you do that to pull them in like it sucks i wish i wasn't here but here <clears throat> people are drawn to they're drawn to stories about themselves and then there of course people are drawn to negativity for whatever reason it's just being human but then you say that but it doesn't you know the frustration there's a way out of it. not 100 percent, but there's a way to avoid um the problems of the bank and the problems with whoever else you got to deal you know all the things that your mother wants to do she used to be able to do and now she can't easily do there's a solution power of attorney once you get that taken care of your mom was at peace <laughs> you know you don't have to you only got a third of the amount of work you got to do you're just gonna go be able to handle business without having to go here and drag her there and do all these things and it's so, so versatile know. too right yeah like there's there's like no restrictions on any type of business that you're in i know there's some people on here they have financial businesses um there is a, they, they may have a pet business they may have a, a yeah. consulting business this is the like notary war room so they have a notary business they can use it in all aspects like i'll i'll, I'll give another example um let's just say you're in the real estate market and you're doing loan closings and i get i'm, I'm gonna use your analogy of the pain po part of it um yeah. thinking about what the loan closer or the loan closer would be going through hey is it hard for you to get you know a notary to notarize these documents are you like pressed for this deadline right like panic mode panic mode red alert yeah. red alert right and you're like hey, well look then we can do this for you we can do that for you but i see what you mean with that i want to put give me a second donnie i'm gonna put on my uh light real quick okay I got these uh, these blue filter things in my glasses, and it makes it look like I got X-ray vision or something. All right. So <laughs> they um. So, ladies and gentlemen, also put in your questions so Donnie can answer some of your questions that you might have. I know we we're filling yeah. up the chat here too. Um, all right. So, how did you get exposed to copywriting anyway? You know what's crazy? I have, I, I, I when I when I was wow when I was a kid, I wanted to be a writer. But I didn't want to. I didn't know what a copywriter was, obviously. <clears throat> but in my grandmother's house, uh, I spent a lot of time at grandma's house. She had. I think I might have told you this. She had twenty five thousand books in the house, inside mm. the house. <laughs> mm. and I used to love climbing up the bookshelves and and. You know, stand, going off the stairs trying to reach for the books at the top that I wasn't supposed to be <laughs> getting into. <clears throat> and so I grew up loving the written word. <clears throat> and I always thought I was going to write books when I grew up. I got into the retail. I got married when I, when I was a freshman in college. Got into retail because I needed to make some money. And did that for some years <clears throat> and hated it. I hated it. <laughs> All right. Just like everybody does. I got into, uh, <clears throat> I was a manager at Kmart working 60, 70, even 80 hours a week. Hmm. Uh, I had three kids at the time. And uh, so if I'm working 80 hours, I'm commuting in Chicago, commuting ain't no joke. And then getting home and I didn't have the energy to hang out with my family and it, and it was bad. And so I said, I gotta figure out a way to make some money mm -hmm. without going through all this. And, and I started messing around on the computer. I don't even really remember what happened, but I, I stumbled across, I believe John Carlton was first. Uh, I, I found this thing called copyright. And I said, oh, wow. and the crazy thing is my wife told me years in, in advance of that. <laughs> she said, you should do something with writing. You always mm -hmm. kind of said you wanted to be a writer. I always ended up writing on the jobs I had anyway. Even at Kmart, I was writing emails for the district manager. <laughs> like, he didn't give me no raise. I want you to write my emails for me. Mm -hmm. All right. But so she knew it before I knew it. And it just happened, I say providentially, because I wouldn't know, wouldn't have never known to find it. Um, but I found it at the right time, it was 2007. And uh, I had, I'm just like you, I had no idea if someone had to write the stuff on the back of your 
you know, novel to get someone to pick up the book and read it. And I, didn't, I had no idea someone had to write the emails and someone had to write the websites and all those things. Uh, but I quickly learned most of those things, many of those things are written by professional copywriters who can get paid a lot of money uh, to do it. Because most people are not great at it. And a lot like, of people- like, what, what is the earning potential for a copywriter? The potential? I mean, there are copywriters who make over a million dollars a year. I Writing don't. Copy. <laughs> yeah. That is why, ladies and gentlemen, I am learning this skill. <laughs> I kid you not. Um, the other thing, man, listen, if, if, even if you're not a professional copywriter, but if you learn how to write copy for your own business, yes, you can make millions or more, tens of millions of dollars. I know for a fact it works because I, I used to try really, really hard to make money online. Couldn't do it. Couldn't do it. I'm talking about from online course to just anything, right? And then after I started understanding sales copy and email, my, I started selling out courses. The, the very, my, my very um, webinar, if you guys ever want to go back to my link bio uh, page, that title is sales copy. It says how to make more without working more or, or right. by working less, right? Without working more. Um, I forgot exactly how I put it, but that very title, once I changed the title, I went from 28%. I don't know if you got like, y'all might think I'm bullshitting. <laughs> hold up, hold up, man. I, like, I got to show receipts, Donnie. They think I'm receipts. fucking around. <laughs> I'm going to show y'all no, real sir. time. Okay. Like my webinars I couldn't, I couldn't get past 30 people to sign up for it. Okay. I don't know if you guys can see it, right? Th this is when I first started my webinars right there. Um, yeah, yeah. Th it started at 38% and then it went, it went down. 29. And then I changed the sales copy and then <laughs> boom! 100. 100. And then look, it just keeps staying at 100. It stays at 100. You, you know what I mean? Like it stays at 100, bro. Receipts. From that little tweak, ladies and gentlemen, that little tweak that I did just on the title. Now you have to understand something. My last five webinars that were for free probably generated 500 emails. Now out of those 500 emails, I can remarket to them. I can sell products, services, exclusive webinars, all kind my, promote my book, my latest book, right? Um, it, uh, it, it's crazy. It's crazy. Yeah. It's like closing deals with print. That's massive, yeah. man. I don't have yeah, to yeah. talk to these people. <laughs> it's a dream come true. <laughs> Thank you, bro. Thank you. That's why I want to, I want to, like people ask me, how do I learn this stuff? Look, I'm going to bring you my coaches, my business, my mentors, the people that train me.